one of the most versatile family SUVs out with the capabilities to go off-road or on-road. And we're gonna show you a little bit of that in this review. Land Rover of Lakeland gives us the 2023 Land Rover Discovery S in Edgar Gray. Land Rover puts itself in a different segment because it's really hard to compare it against vehicles in the sense of all the capabilities that this can conquer. But Lexus, Infiniti, Audi, BMW, they're all trying to capture what Land Rover can conquer. Can they do it? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. The Land Rover Discovery S has the best ground clearance between 8.1 and 11.1 .1 inches, a front track at 66.6 .6 inches, approach angle at 26 degrees. It has the best weighting depth, 35.43 inches. LED headlamps and daytime runnings, a low wide stance, Refresh grill was back in 2021 with rework exterior lights and they added our dynamic trim. Two new turbos was implemented back in 2021. For 2023, we get a Metropolitan Edition, which comes with the 355 horsepower inline six special upgraded 22 inch wheels and grill with silver bumpers, titanium mesh inlays on the dash and door panels. Our dynamic comes standard with contrast black roof. And unlike the rivals, we have a sporty dynamic front but we can still go all terrain which they can't do 21 inch five split spoke gloss black edgar wheels the front disc reading at 14.4 inches it's ventilated the rear at 13.8 inches short and long arm front suspension multi-link rear suspension both anti-roll bars brake actuated limited slip differential terrain response with selectable driving and off-road mode which works together to automatically balance torque between the front and rear wheels maximizing traction air suspension and adaptive dynamics and it's not going to be the longest in this segment a length at 195.1 inches wheelbase at 115 inches and if you want to use the roof rails 176 pounds of capability none of the rivals are going to do that it's usually 120 to 150 a curb weight 48 65. the gloss black elements definitely give that iconic land rover style and image in the way they flow the roof line, making it easy to put things on top, a lower roof spoiler that hides that windshield wiper in the back, so it gives that luxury appearance. Now there is some areas in the back that I wish they would have tweaked, in which where the license plate is, I wish it was centered because it would make it look a little bit more polished and clean because it's a flat back that goes down into the lower with your reverse parking sensors, 360 degree surround view camera, departure angle at 24.6 degrees, towing up to 8,500 pounds. This one, because of the engine, it will be only 5,125 pounds. Power lift gate going inside to 11.6 cubic feet for the back behind the third row with a 12 volt LED interior lights. You don't necessarily have any storage here, but you can lower and raise the suspension from the back to make it easier for your loading. Split fold the third row at a 50-50 split that increases your cargo to 43.35 cubic feet. Split fold the second row at a 40-20-40 split electronically in the back that's going to increase your cargo to 76.93 cubic feet. It's not necessarily going to be the best in class, however, it is better than the Lexus GX460, a little bit less than the Infiniti QX80, however, that one also is over 15 inches longer. Turbocharge, let's go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust now.
adjustable suspension, so it's gonna be better ground clearance, better fording through water, decent towing capabilities, everyday use, and they back the performance with a 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder, producing 296 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. That's paired to an eight speed ZF automatic transmission, achieving 19 to 22 MPGs. That's good for a zero to 60 at 6.9 seconds with the top speed at 125 miles per hour. And with these numbers, it's not going to be the fastest variant. However, it's still quick enough. I mean, you're looking at a third row SUV that can conquer on and off road pavement and you still have decent gas consumption. Going back to the Lexus and Infiniti, they're both V8s. They're going to be gasaholic. So your everyday use is going to be better in this, a little bit more practical. And if you are comparing it against an Audi and BMW, the price point of those are going to be significantly higher and you're still not going to be able to do all the terrain that the Land Rover will do. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2023 Land Rover Discovery S as we go into the interior. Go over the tech and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Land Rover Discovery S. You're gonna receive 40 inches of headroom, 39.1 inches of legroom, ebony dual leather, 12-way power adjustments for the front seats. They're heated seats, which is standard. You get contrast stitching. We have the piano black that will run down the dash and the satin aluminum around the center infotainment screen, which was all new for 2021, the 11.4 Pivi Pro. We have the pinch and the swipe click the home button. This takes you back to your quick wedges to connect your phone, your media, which is a 400 watt Meridian sound system that is standard. You can do your wheel information, which is basically your off-road page, and it will show everything live for your approach and departure angle. You can go into your weight sensing. This is good if you actually do take it off-road and you go into a pond because you could see and it will sensor and let you know how deep it is. Your terrain information, which you can pause and read. This is all of the driving modes in which you have, and you can have it set as automatic, or you can just push that, and you can configure it yourself and just have eco or your comfort mode. You click onto those four little squares, you can see everything a little bit quicker. Put it into reverse. We have a 360 degree surround view camera. You also have a off-road capability, and you have your towing capability. When you go onto your regular road, you have full trajectory and it starts off with your reverse and then you have your surround view here. For your 3D view, which you can go all around the vehicle, you can just swipe or you can click. You can also click on these little camera positions here to do the same functionality of the 3D surround view. If you want to zoom in, click closer or click further. Going down to your dual climate control settings, this is a touch sensitive set up. When you open up here, you have a storage compartment. It's pretty deep. You can pretty much fit a hand inside there. Your wireless charging pad and a storage compartment right next to it with a 12 volt. To turn on the audio sound system, the new gear knob that was implemented in 21, an area for your key fob and your cup holders, I would say you can easily fit 32 ounces without any issues and another little storage area. It's gonna be more firm derive and sporty. Open up for the first tier and you can put some cell phones, a USB-C and a port. Open up again and it's gonna be a deep storage. They do offer a refrigerator inside. This model doesn't have it. Click this button here and this is your top glove box. Open up like normal and that's your other glove box. So optimal storage they give for the front. The steering wheel is a four spoke. It's multi-function and the buttons are multi-functionality. When you click on them, it changes what it actually does. And the same thing for your climate control. When you pull it, this will change or adjust the fan speed. When you push it, this will be for your heated ventilated seats. And then standard, would be just to turn up and down your climate control. We have the paddle shifters. The gauge cluster can go through an array of information for the driver. You can change the panel layout whenever you click onto there on the multi-function steering wheel. 
and we have adaptive cruise control, which is standard for 2023. The door panel starts off with the Meridian sound system tweeter and then the speaker right there. One touch up and down for all of your windows and it's pretty much an area here that you can rest your arms or another area. Both are going to be a little bit more sport derived. You get the piano black and the grab handle with the matte black that's going to surround it. Storage is going to be long, it's just gonna be a little narrow. For the second row, I'm at 40 inches of headroom, 37.4 inches of legroom, six foot three, not an issue in the Discovery. One thing that I do dislike though, is we do not really have a pano for the second row, you do for the third row. And you have two power seat adjustments where you can adjust this back or forward in which it's not really too much there, but you can adjust this manually forward which will give optimal space for the third row occupants. And even if you put it in the middle or all the way back, it's still doable. Third climate control settings, a 12 volt down here, no other charging ports. Air vents in the center, storage behind both of the front seats. We do have a USB behind both of the front seats and you can remove this here and you can adjust any type of clips if you wanted to put like a iPad or Android tablet, you could do so for the back seats. The door panel, get your everyday materials on the top. You get that piano black that's going to wrap around. It's gonna be soft for your elbows. I do like where they put the grab handle because it's just seamless. And the storage pocket is gonna be a little bit narrow, but it is a long storage pocket. Sitting into the center, headroom is still no issue, nor is leg space, even though the floor isn't flat. I pretty much have my own area carved out. So feet, butt, shoulder space is not really an issue. Entering into the third row, push the button. It's going to adjust it. And then you have to slide it forward. And it's an easy entrance afterwards. For the third row, I don't have any issues with headroom, nor really with leg room. It's just the way your feet have to be positioned because they have kind of an awkward setup for your cup holder, any type of phones. You don't really have any armrests. You do have another little storage pocket here that's really designed just for the seat belts. Is it doable? Yes, you're gonna have to probably sit like this. So for taller people, it's not an issue because the windows and the way it's structured, it fits pretty decent for my arm to rest. And we have our own pano. 296 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque, a little bit of off-road. Obviously, it's gonna be a little bit bumpy. These are upgraded wheels. But even if you do light terrain, you're going camping, you're taking the family out, you gotta do a little bit of off-road, I know this is not crazy, you could still actually do crazy off-road. You can ford through water, you could tow. The roof rails nearly have 200 pounds of capacity. This is an all-round family slash adventure SUV, which is really hard to find, and you get the technology and luxury carried over from Land Rover. So when you're looking at competition like the Lexus, the GX is a great car. The only thing that they've done really recently though is increase the screen size. You're not going to get the new turbocharged engine yet. That's gonna be in the Sequoia in which you're not gonna be getting as much luxury as you would with the Lexus. Everyday driving, with a little bit of gas. Under seven seconds, zero to 60, almost 200 inches of length. So you have the pickup because the power is actually a lot less than all of the rivals. Yes, towing is gonna be a little bit less than the GX and the Infiniti, but the, both of those, you're gonna be paying a lot more to fill it up because they're V8 engines. So this one, you're gonna have more of a practical day in and day out use. Now there is some things I like and dislike and that's what we're gonna go over right now. Starting off with the three things that I like about this vehicle. Land Rover captures everything in one segment and you're not paying $70,000 when you get some features and you get some upgrades in your S. I like that because when you're looking at the rival perspective, everything is going to entertain 70 to 80, if not $90,000. And you can do more capabilities in this than those. Give her a little go. And your brakes. It's a heavier vehicle, so the brakes are not going to be the best in class. But the dynamic drive, 
doesn't really feel boaty so it is good because when you're looking at air suspension typically with these longer vehicles you're gonna feel like you're all over the place and you're not the second thing that I like about the vehicle every row I can fit in and this is not 200 inches it's 195 inches so when you're thinking about a long vehicle this is actually not that long turn radius at a stop point it's gonna get about two and a part lane let's rock and roll The last thing that I like about the vehicle is how smooth it is. When you get an all-terrain vehicle, typically it's not so smooth. Yes, the Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer is smooth, but the price point to those is going to be twenty dollars to $40,000 more to get capabilities that this can actually outdo. So you really have to think, when you're wanting a rugged vehicle, something that can do things like a Jeep Wrangler or a Ford Bronco, and you don't want to have all that exterior noise inside, and you want to be able to do some fun stuff on the weekend, Land Rover's the way you go. Three things that I dislike has to start off when you are folding down the third row seats. You can't just fold them down like a normal car. You have to fold down the headrest first, then the seat. And in some cases, you might have to push or use the power seat adjustment for the second row for them to fold flat. So it's just a lot of movement. I kind of wish they would have made it a little bit easier and quicker. The second thing that I dislike about the vehicle is the wireless charging pad. And I found this in a lot of vehicles that I've been reviewing. When it moves around, it's constantly disconnecting, reconnecting. It just can't stay still in the sense of just charging the phone like it's supposed to. The last thing that I dislike goes into the third row area. For your feet space, they've carved out this area for cup holders and some storage area. However, when they did that, they've pushed a few inches too much on both the left and right side, making it where you have to kind of sit crooked in the back and the seats don't sit crooked so it's not necessarily undesirable it just could have been reconfigured better because when you're in the back or the third row you have a sufficient area where it could be an armrest they could have just put it right there so just a design element and the second row doesn't receive a pano moonroof and i understand what they're doing because they have the roof rail set a certain way it just would look nicer to have a longer pano here and maybe a smaller in the third row because in the cargo area you don't really need a window as for day in and day out drive that's what the Land Rover does. You don't have to have the best and most powerful engine variant. It can still conquer everything. Going back to rival perspective, BMW is going to be more performance. The same thing with Audi and Mercedes. Yes, you could take some of the Mercedes Benz off-road and you can do the same thing with BMW and Audi. It's just when you're looking for full performance off-road in the sense of fording through water, there's not a lot of variants that can do that. You really have to jump into a Lexus. Infinity can't even actually conquer some of those things because of the engine towing capacity and how much space you have in the interior. But then you got to look at the length. That's over 210 inches. The Lexus is going to be the most comparable to this. And that one is going to be at least five to $10,000 more to get it specced up to the level that we have or to have the capabilities in which we can conquer. I'd like to thank Land Rover Lakeland for giving us this 2023 Land Rover Discovery S for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video and the subscribe button. Check out the merchandise, Instagram and website and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.